So in this video, I wanted to show exactly what I do when I touch the car. So every time that I touch the car, it's being recorded and shown to you. So in this video, I'm fixing the front door, the rear door, and the rear quarter panel. And there are a couple parts where there's no sound. That's because I'm talking with my customer. And there's some confidential or controversial stuff that we talk about that I don't want on this video. And you probably don't want to hear. So, if you hear some little spots where there's no voice, that's why. The video's not really messed up. Anyway, the video's pretty cool. Hope you like this. If you do, you know, let me know. I can make more of these. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to show you every single thing that it takes to fix and paint a door. So, here you go.
That's cool. Top of the thing, man.
is it? Um, on this car right here. Right? The only time I got an accident, if you want to call it that. I was at a light over at, uh, over by where Wesley Chapel High School is up there before. Uh, right there. Someone rear-ended me. I was parked at a light, me and my boss sitting on the light and we get studied. Right. Some drunk from the bar that was up earlier on 54. Right. She was drunk as a skunk. Right. She came out of the car staggering a little bit. Said, everybody okay? I said, yeah. And then I said, I'll call the cops. I called the cops and she took off. Did I get their plate? No. But the cop, she eventually called, you know, came in uh, right. to the cops. She had all day, but she was drunk as, she waited to show so, so many accidents, I guess. I'm like, is it is it so bad? Are you so understaffed that you can't even police the traffic anymore? Like. Um, actually, they, in, in their defense, they, it is. Well, that's they've terrible. Actually, they've, cut, they've cut back on the resources, and that's why they cut back. So well, that's that's just terrible. They spend it on violent crime and drugs and all that. That's the truth, actually. That, I don't think that, I think that truly is a, a resource allocation issue. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying, you know, like, I, I understand that those are, are, are higher priority, but why yeah. am I, why am I funding stuff that, that, you know, like, for me, like, crime is the biggest issue that we need to, you know, like, if we don't have a safe society, we have That's what we have. No, no, it's okay. I mean, come on, my windshield, yeah. I know, right? Bumper, bumper thing. That's how I saw it. And actually, knowing cops like I do, they would prefer not to get involved because it's he said, she said. And that the adjusters can make those determinations, by the way. Yeah, but it's like, I'm... I mean, like, I'm at a stoplight, though. I can understand, like, I, hey, I, I, I totally understand parking lots because parking lots are private property, right? Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. So, just to be clear, like, if you're ever hitting a parking lot, you're responsible. It doesn't matter. It's private property. Nobody's going to assess playing. Insurance can kind of fight it sometimes, but typically. So if anybody's going to give you, if they, if they total your car and they're going to write your check for 100 bucks, take it. Gotcha. <laughs> you know? Because it's like, yeah. you know. Well, I'm not going to do anything that's lower than my deductible, for one thing. And my deductible is 1000 Right. And I'm not going to really, and like I said, I'll take a payout up to 2500 because I know that that's typical. Unless right. I was at fault. I mean, unless... I was at, yeah, I was at fault, and then I might as well just play it by the book because I don't want to sue. And I don't want the, the ambulance chasers to hit my uh, umbrella. Anyway. Here's the thing. Listen, when people... <laughs> That's hilarious, man. I love it. <laughs> you know, there's only yeah. so much I can do. Oh, no, I get it. You know, I think it's... Yeah. What I think is... Here's what I think is, is so crazy. Is yeah. that most of these witty, they're pretty... You know, they're good at sales. They're doing all this stuff. And if they just took that same amount of energy and put it towards legal stuff, they could still make a lot of money. They were showing... He was a, he was a complete con artist. But I'm like, you know, like... And he was, you know, a, a, a felon for, for fraud and stuff like that. But I'm like, but he put, like, listen, we all know, like, a lot of that. But, you know, it's like, here's a guy who, who said, okay, how do I do this? How do I, you know, do this stuff legally? You know what I mean? Because it's like, right. it's like, I mean, you got to give him credit because he found a, a legal way to. Not a greedy. We mm. can't catch the good ones, the ones that could do it for 30 years to you. Oh, yeah. Because they're steady and there's no... There's no way to identify a practice unless if we happen to stumble upon it. And, but how many, if they're that safe though, 
and they're getting away with it, then they're just a small con man anyway. And I don't want to spend my resources or my people to go find these people. I just don't let that go. You know, I've done work for all kinds of people. I don't know if he was part of some mob family or something like that, you know what I mean, or what, because, like, I'm 90 like... 90% of the time, these are Ponzi schemes. And yeah, it, it, you know, it was. And I remember I remember doing work with somebody, and I said, I said, I want to learn how to do... He, they were like, man, I want to learn how to... He, but he was, like, just candidly talking like me and you, like, I want to learn how to do a Ponzi scheme. I'm like, <laughs> you want to learn to do a Ponzi scheme, huh? You know who the best criminals are? Hmm. The best criminals in the world... Right. So, or low end. So I say, uh, you know, I said, tell you what, you can go on there and learn from that person. Really? And that's what you can learn from me today. Because you need someone who thinks like them. You need a criminal to find a criminal. Even mm -hmm. if they're not a criminal, and you know that they're ethically cha uh, challenged, that's who I put them on the team. I said, the scumbags are always going to find the scumbags because birds of a feather. You know that saying? Ethically challenged. I like that. Yeah. It's birds of a feather. They flock together. So that's how you do it. So now, so that's one of the secrets in my business. I, I, no one could ever figure out why I bring these people in that I have that they're like, these people don't know nothing about our laws and regs. I'm thinking regulations. I'm thinking to myself, forget it. I'm not even going to try to explain it. What I, I think, get results. <laughs> what I think is funny is like, I, I had somebody last night ask me to do something shady, and I'm like, no, I can't help you. You know, they, uh, they, and here's a person who, by appearance, like, so like, and where did you get this car, you know, like, and how did this happen? Like, the, like the, you know, like when people lie to me, you know, but I tell my wife this, I don't like to spend time with anybody, but I have to figure out if they're lying. I don't want to have to try to spend my day figuring out if what you and I are talking about is true or not. Right. I won't. I won't spend time with people like that. No, I don't care what they do, right? Well, so it's not easy though. Yeah. It, it was there before you were there. There after you were there. It doesn't kill me. It's and if I'm gonna you try to say, can I just squeeze another dollar out of this? Yep. Or hey, you know, you know how it feels. Here, here I'm gonna appeal to your sense here. Um, you know, Siggy, you, you did the whole car and it's one scratch remains. Can you look at this for me, really? I mean, can you do anything for me? I mean, come on, you know, it's a new, it's a BMW. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. what you mean, that kind of. And they'll squeeze an extra dollar at you. We, I in always, a way, that's a con man, in a way. You know what's funny is I had somebody, <laughs> somebody this weekend, this <laughs> woman, say, oh, I, I, The conniving person is? Yeah. It? Okay. That, yeah. They're going to squeeze every dollar out of you, and, you know, I feel like I was castrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally get it, man, you know? I was like, do I have any balls left? And, the, and then, of course, my wife, I tell her about it, and she goes, sucker! So if it wasn't validated enough, thank you, honey, for taking care of the rest. <laughs> well, I, you know who I don't like dealing with? What? In business? What was it? What was it? Right. And I don't care if it's about the dollars at the end of the day. They were in my way. <laughs> they needed to go. Yeah. And, you know, so I get you that. So as a culture, it's almost like it's flexible. <laughs>
And I tell them, I said, listen, I don't, you know, like if you start asking me, like for me, like you start being weird and you start asking me like kind of yeah. weird questions, I'm like, not doing work for you. That's all there is to it. It's not because I'm, I just, listen, I just had experience. Because, not because I'm better than that. I, I, but it's like, because I know like when you start asking me, is it going to be perfect? Is it going to be flawless? I'm not going to make you happy. Like, no, I'm not your guy. You know, do you use but BMW paint or something? You know, the it's like rich people as a group are the hardest people to please. They have the most money, but they're trying to squeeze every little thing out of you. I, I, maybe I'm wrong from you, maybe your line of business, but in my line of business, the toughest people are the ones that come in and say that they're, they're yes you to death, and then by the time you're halfway through it, they're giving you a, a list of to-dos. <laughs> no, I, 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 that's why I have that whole disclaimer on there now. Oh, because I know, like, they, it says like- they, I you know, read like, your disclaimer, I was like, I, actually that made me a little worried about you. I yeah. was like, I read so many good things about you, and then all of a sudden, I'm starting to see this thing looking like some kind of, uh, well, maybe maybe there's something wrong with him. <laughs> well, you know, and you, you got have a good you have a good reputation. I did research on you. I think you figured it out. Uh, I think that's uh, that's key. You know, I think that you yeah. Know. I didn't call referrals because I don't need to. I just need to. I what I did is okay. I'm gonna be honest. I, I could even show you how I did it too. I did an algorithm to baby take the good comments and the bad columns, import them into a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. sort them out, and then it came out that you came out like 65% good. <laughs> and 65% in my line of business, 52% gets you my interest, 60% usually gets you my business. That's awesome, I'm man. statistical. I, I had, uh, I've so had... around 66%. This, those are outliers. He treated them as such. It's, yeah, no, I, I, you know. I totally understand. I did it or it was during my reign of terror. I yeah. noticed my son because he did that with my my truck and I'll go back to you. My truck, that was my son running into the garage. Right. But apparently before I gave him his car, I did that and I didn't even realize it or someone hit me or something and I'll tell my son, well you wrecked two cars and she's like, well I don't know about that. And I was like, how do you even remember this? She goes, how do you not? I said, because why do you think I'm doing so well at work? I, I, I don't listen to half the stuff and therefore I can get double the work done. <laughs> I did. Please go back to you. In fact, I was blaming him for it. Yeah. Listen, it's... Now, I did tell you that story that one time I really lied to a good and that, about my life. I told you the story that... I can be honest about that. It's funny. It's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, I would never do that. <laughs> the implication. You think I did that? <laughs> You're right. I mean, I, said, I did, but I'm just saying. I said, look at all the miles in front of the car. You know how these people are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these right. People. It's my wife, you know. I know. <laughs> Boy, I got, it was the funniest thing. When I heard it, I started laughing. I just couldn't help it. I was like, oh, did I said, I never told you that I did, didn't do it or did do it. All I said is, you know how it is. <laughs> to me, that was the funniest thing ever. And I just got so busted with it. And I bring it up still because I don't really get, if I'm going to do that, it's usually to save other people's feelings. Right. But I guess this one was my feelings. <laughs> and I don't even, I, I do remember doing that, by the way. <laughs> That's why it was fun. Oh, yeah. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> When I, when I, you know, it's like there's this movie, Be Cool. It's uh -huh. with The Rock and it's with uh, Vince Vaughn. I think it's with, I think it's the one with Vince Vaughn. Anyway, there's this movie, it's Vince Vaughn. I'm pretty sure it was the, oh, I think it was Be Cool. So they're looking, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. You know? And he's like, oh, okay, okay, you're the guy. You know what I mean? Like, when yeah. Vince Vaughn was trying to act, I'll tell him, he's like, no, 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 I'm just saying, what if I was saying that? I wasn't, I wasn't saying that. I was saying, what if I, I'm not saying that. I know the that. The big talkers are always, the you know what I mean? Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The big talkers. Uh, when you have a scammer and he does a lot of talking, does a lot of threatening, you gotta call him on his bluff. You know what I told you? I was saying, dude, I got it disabled, and they said they were gonna send their, you 
just gonna come over to my house and you know and uh, take care of my family for me. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. And he was, he was scamming my friend out of twenty thirty thousand dollars. So I was trying to get rid of the extortion string. Right. And um, I called my dad up, who was you know uh, army ranger. And he says he says son, the people who talk the best. Take him on. Say, yes, you could do that. So I called the guy back and said, you know, I decided that if you want to come up and do that, just give me a warning so I can at least not be there for you. Yeah. And my dad says, if I get run like hell, you're dead. You know? Oh, That's yeah. That's what he told me. Anyway, I'm going to let you work for a little while because i got to go answer some work emails. Uh, most of them annoying because you have to give training. They always give you questions. Well, <laughs> I have this scenario. I forgot to take notes on this. Okay, and I'm like... So I felt like, no, I guess I'm like, listen, I'm not trying to do that guy for you. I said, but all you literally have to do is go outside, take a picture, text it to me, and I can do the exact fight in a minute. Like, I don't, you know, like, like I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like, I'm not trying to. They have to understand that the world is part of a million. People, you yeah. know, listen, you know, I... Parts per million. You can't it's, even, you can, yeah, parts per, I like that, parts per million, yeah. People, you just, it's just like, I don't know, man, it's just, that's why some days I just can't even answer my phone, because I'm like, I'm going to tell somebody to go f Thank you. 